Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime and we've got three big stories for you to talk about today. Before we jump into though, I will remind you that hey, we have a giveaway going on right now for a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch OLED. One of you get to win one of these systems, you get to choose. Uh, all you have to do is enter through the gleam.io link down in the description or the pinned comment. Also, this will probably be our last major giveaway until right around E3 slash Summer Game Fest time. We're actually gonna be banking up giveaway prizes for that event. We're gonna have hundreds of items being given away. And yeah, so we're just gonna kind of bank up for that. And so enjoy this last final big giveaway we're doing here. Uh, we'll still have some member exclusive giveaways that happen here and there when we hit certain goals during live streams, but that's neither here nor there. Also stay tuned at the end of the video to maybe preview a couple things we are giving away uh, during E3, so that's kind of cool. Also, we will have a couple announcements for the channel as well. All right, folks, let's get into this first bit of news, and this deals with Square Enix. They have opened up a new YouTube channel called Square Enix Music. There are 5,500 tracks or so. They're adding some here and there all the time. Lots of playlists, most of it from their biggest IPs and games from Final Fantasy, the Mana series, etc. Just everything seems to be covered here, including even some live concerts. What's interesting, of course, is that while this is happening and while the Pokemon Company actually recently released one of their official albums for free for people to use and listen to, um, although not necessarily in this manner, this is obviously a much grander manner than the Pokemon Company has done, Nintendo themselves has yet to do anything. Nintendo continues to take out music channels, continues to take out music, continues to remove their music. It's not available on Spotify, it's not available on YouTube, it's not available anywhere officially beyond some official soundtracks. Now, Nintendo has released um, several official soundtracks, usually physical copies of soundtracks for pretty much every game they release. Most of these soundtracks never release outside of Japan and are very difficult to get your hands on in general. Even when you live in Japan, there are limited copies made. So while there is a legal way to buy all of this music, it's not easy, it's not cheap, and it's not accessible. And that has obviously been the number one criticism against Nintendo. And with Square Enix now releasing basically all of their biggest music for free, for everyone to use and listen to freely, I just, it, it kind of just highlights what we're missing as Nintendo fans. All of us obviously listen to lots of remixes and all that stuff, and some of us even, you know, partake in just listening to Nintendo's music anyways, because it is available on YouTube you know, until Nintendo takes them out. Like, it's really weird. Like, you could find the original Legend of Zelda theme song all over YouTube because there's so many channels that have re-uploaded that music. But Nintendo slowly takes them out. We should just be able to go to Nintendo and be able to listen. It shouldn't be that difficult. We shouldn't be reliant on other people willing to, you know, mess around with copyright law and just say, screw it, we're gonna throw it up anyway. So, I don't know. I'm really happy about this news though. I could finally listen to the entire soundtrack of Secret of Mana without having to dig through other people's YouTube channels. So that's really cool and that's exciting for me because I absolutely love that game. It's my second favorite game of all time. You might think, N Nate, why not Nintendo? Hey, Breath of the Wild's at the top, but, oh, Secret of Mana, baby, back the good stuff. Next up, Nintendo is actually doing something really cool. Next week from March 25th through the 27th from 12 p.m. Pacific time to 6 p.m. Pacific time, they are running a tournament, a new tournament on each day. That tournament will be for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and this does come after the new content is added, which means there's a high likelihood that those new tracks would be in these tournaments. Remember, the new tracks, you don't have to own the DLC. It's completely free to enter, by the way, although obviously you'll have to be a member of the Nintendo Switch Online service, at least the base package. And yeah, Nintendo's offering prizes. Now, Nintendo doesn't offer prizes very often, and in this case, they're offering 2,500 gold coins to the top eight finishers on each day. So they're giving away basically $200 worth of, you know, goodness a day just for fun. Now, some people have argued that's not enough or that's not enough winners or enough money to give away because uh, these are essentially gold coins that you can convert into eShop currency. I will say this, hey, it's better than nothing. This is an event that costs Nintendo nothing. It's probably a single person at Nintendo of America because this is just a North American event. Setting up a tournament online and just setting it to public so everyone can do it. And then maybe one social media person to push it out. So this isn't like a big group of people doing this. Obviously, we could all talk about how, hey, at my channel, we give away a hell of a lot more than that, a hell of a lot more often. Uh, but hey, look, this is free. 
it's nothing, it's cool, it's gonna encompass the entire community, uh, and yeah, obviously it's gonna lower your chances to win, but uh, still, if you happen to be one of those people that regularly do extremely well in these tournaments or on you know, Mario Kart 8, maybe check this out and get an opportunity to see your name posted by Nintendo, your username anyways, and getting a free 2,500 coins. Like, why not? Hey, it's 25 bucks. Hey, that ain't nothing. <sighs> Lastly, we get to talk about E3. We talked last week how it appears that E3 is coming back, how I've seen an email, how others are reporting this email exists as well, sent out to developers, that we're going to be getting an all digital E3 coming in June. But we have maybe our best evidence of date, and you know what? I'm gonna let Jeff Grubb take it away. Sander Dark 91 says, have you heard anything about the date for the Xbox E3 showcase yet? Rumors are saying they might have a show in May and September instead of June. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be a June. It's going to be a June. <laughs> Is that the thing you're talking about earlier? That's the thing I'm talking to... about earlier. Let's just talk about it now. On Twitter? June? Uh, I'll have more, probably more to say on this soon, but it's, uh, yeah, it's it, it's in June. Uh, not, uh, not May. Uh, well, they might do something in May. They might do something in September. I don't know. But I know they are planning for an E3-style show in June. They're talking to partners to get big games in there. That is That is ongoing right now. So, and that's like it's March. So it's not like they can change that train or, or you know, turn that big ship around. Uh, they are heading in that direction. They're going to do something in that time frame. Good job, Alexander Dark. I bet Jeff wanted to save that for grub stacks and you made him have to spill the beans here. Good work. Well, he got it so well. So I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll give, I'll give Alexander. Yeah. Essentially what Jeff Grubb said there is, you know what? Microsoft's already planning their big E3 show. He already knows about it. They've already reached out to developers to commit to their portion of that E3 show, and it's happening in June, like always. Now, this matters because rumors have been landing at least last week that Microsoft had something planned for May and September, sort of like their own little direct shows, and there could be something game-specific still, but that was reported on by Special Nick, who's a um, Xbox podcast host, and what's funny about that is Special Nick actually told us we were getting a Switch Pro last year and Zelda's, Zelda's 30 35th anniversary and literally put like a big flag in the ground on this saying that he knew and had direct sources and then none of that stuff happened. So look, Jeff Grubb gets a lot wrong as well. We're not here just going to ignore that. However, Jeff Grubb is a video game journalist with actual connections and some people take what he says that's just his opinion because he has a lot of opinion based shows um, and speculation and mix that in with his facts. But he's very clear about this is what I've heard this is what is happening. This is what I think will happen. He's actually very clear about all that. And when you separate it out, you know what? The stuff that he actually knows, he's not that wrong about. Sometimes some dates get pushed around because he'll be like, hey, look, I heard that this is happening around this time, but it could happen a little later, it could happen a little sooner. That obviously means the company themselves might not have fully committed to it. But in this case, Xbox is fully committed to making a live, or not really a live, a, a pre recorded you know, whatever. Their, their E3 show is happening, and it's happening in June. So there you go. That's really, really cool. That's really big news. Obviously, what the way for E3 to officially announce their dates, and obviously the Nintendo, Microsoft, Microsoft, you know, Ubisoft and whoever else is going to participate announcing when they're going to be doing their shows during the E3 event. Um, how's this going to work around with Summer Game Fest as well? Because Summer Game Fest and E3 happen roughly around the same time. We'll be live streaming all of it and attempting to live stream all of it because there might be some crossover on some days. But uh, yeah, you guys let me know what you think about all of that. I'm obviously really stoked for the entire event. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that at the end here, we would actually talk a little bit about some updates regarding the channel. And well, we have some updates updates for you. Number one, uh, if you have any news, rumors, or you know anything, maybe you're the source, you work at some company, and you would like to get a hold of me and submit um, some news tips, some rumors tips, or whatever, you can now use tips at nintendoprime.net to do that. I will now start linking that in the bottom of the description and putting that in the about section uh, on our YouTube channel as well. So if people want to use that and submit some news tips and all that, I prefer you do that over Twitter DMs and other ways that people sometimes contact me. Uh, it just keeps it organized and away from other ongoing activities. Also, if you would like to, uh, or if you have previously won a giveaway, and I have yet to email contact you, I've yet to uh, sort that out. We are looking to get all of our prior giveaway winners, ones that we maybe missed along the way, taken care of here before we get to E3. I will encourage you to use our brand new giveaway email 
giveaway at nintendoprime.net uh, and we will try to go from there, submit all the prior emails and evidence you can uh, so I can get that all sorted out on that end. Uh, I'm basically looking to reorganize how I have Nintendo Prime structured moving forward so I can really keep things separated. So here's like the news tips, here's the giveaway winners and this is just strictly for business stuff. So like companies want to reach out for sponsorships or review copies of games. Like that's what Nathan at NintendoPrime.net is for. All three of these emails, of course, will be listed publicly. Also remember what our giveaway rules are. I will always make sure the giveaway rules are linked in the description, even when giveaways aren't happening. Uh, the giveaway rules, there's a whole lot of legal jargon in there, but basically it's 90 days of contact, uh, five years to get it taken care of. None of the giveaways should actually take five years to get you your item. That would be pretty ridiculous, but it's just in there to protect against lawsuits and stuff like that. I always intend, if you want a giveaway, to for you to get your prize. Obviously, it takes a while. We deal with scams. Sometimes I think I handed out a giveaway to the right person, and it turns out I didn't, and I find out months and months later that this person who actually won still didn't get it, while the person who scammed me never got back a hold of me after I sent them the item. Oh, man. Giveaways are just, they're, they're such a hassle. Anyways, folks, I want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is a lot of fun. We got a live stream tonight, as always. It's Monday, and I'll catch you in the next video. By the way, shout out to Nintendo Academy. He gave me the idea for these lights um, lighting up the gray wall behind me. Let me know what you think. Is it a little too much? I mean, I won't always use them. Sometimes it'll just be a gray wall, but I don't know. Peace out.